Can you use prime lenses for travel photography? And if yes, which ones are the best? If you've watched any of my previous travel photography videos, you will have noticed that I love bringing my Tamron zoom lens with me. This is the Tamron 17-70mm f2.8 for Sony APS-C and it's been great, I love it. You can take relatively wide shots at 17mm but you can also zoom in all the way to 70mm to take pictures of things that are a bit further away. I really like the degree of flexibility the Tamron lens gives me. However, I have spent a bunch of money on these prime lenses, the Sigma 30mm and the Samyang 12mm. And even in previous videos with the Tamron, I would frequently change over to the Samyang 12mm wide-angle lens uh, whenever 17 wasn't wide enough. So, we're going to go on the trip to Malta this weekend and test out these prime lenses and see how they do compared to my usual Tamron zoom setup. On the itinerary, we have cool architecture, beach photo shoots and caves, so make sure you stick around till the end and I hope you enjoy the video. First shot here in Malta, we've just found the Maltese um, St. Paul's equivalent, which I thought looked pretty cool, especially at the end of this kind of alleyway. So I'm just going to snap a quick shot before we actually walk to the cathedral because we want to go inside and check it out. So because this is like a bit of a landscape shot, we're going to f6.3. Put my eyes all the way down, who needs that? Another one of this alleyway. I'm liking the harsh sunlight, it's creating some interesting shadows. Cool, colourful little balcony type thing. It's quite nice. We are in um, Malta's St. Paul's Co-Cathedral, which is a really significant landmark here, and it's so stunning. I love the architecture already. Whenever you want to include a lot of architectural features, such as a really impressive floor and a really impressive ceiling, I tend to use the wide-angle lens for that. So I put my 12mm on for this, and try and get some shots. Maybe I will change over to the 30mm in a moment. Look at this sanctuary, oh my days, this is so impressive, I love it. I'm going to hold my camera as high as I can to be able to show the background a bit more. F4.5, shutter speed 1 over 60, and snap. That is stunning. We are in the oratory building. We have a really cool ceiling, but it's quite dark, so I'm going to have to go F3.2 and shutter speed of 1 over 50. And stand right below this thing. Cool. It's not a quick shot here. Maybe we'll take a portrait of you in a moment as well. Which one? I liked it when you just looked to the side like that. If you just read the entrance sign over there, uh, twist your whole body a bit more towards me. Yeah, you can move your leg too, like that. Okay, let me just compose the shot. Get the background right, go a bit lower down to show more of the ceiling. Choose um, different focal points and just like rotate between them each time you hear a click in the camera. Perfect, yeah. Okay, let me go here again. Cross your legs. Okay, now look up. Nice. Look at all this intricate detail, it's insane. Let's take a picture of that window with the painting and the arch underneath that's cool i like that what about a straight on version there we go click let's just let me take a detailed shot of this pattern on the wall get a bit closer maybe let's get real close and get a picture of this cross Apparently this cross symbolizes the union of the eight countries that are that were involved in the opening of this church. So I'm going right here. Oh there we go, I can use the screen for for the perspective. Um, twist your head more towards me. Do the same do the same look as earlier. The looking up one. Yeah. Oh, should we try and go upstairs? Let's do that. Wow, look at this. What a view. Let me go F 4.5. Take a shot like this. Oh, that's so pang. That's really good. 
That reminds me, let me take a horizontal one here too. Taking a test shot here because I just dropped my lens on the floor. Unfortunately, I didn't have it on camera, but I was very concerned for about a few seconds, but it seems it's fine. An old house furniture. I don't know, it looks kind of cool. Quite antique looking. Let's take a photo like this. And then how about a close-up of this rusty doorbell? Oh, let's add some layers. Cool. I like this. <laughs> that green, the green pillar thing with the green balcony. What is that? It's not a balcony, is it? It's like um, something. Ooh, that's kind of satisfying. Perfect. Go on. You do a race. Wait, 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 wait. A race? Jimmy's gonna beat me. Well, I've got a camera and my bag. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> what? It's grabbing onto my camera. Sabotage. Easy. Easy. Yeah, because I wasn't trying. Oh, this is sick. Yes, Georgia. Amazing spot. I knew she said when you came here, I was like, Jimmy, I thought this I would like this. Let's, do you see that edge on the left of the dome? Let's get a picture there when you're either sat or leaning against it. Oh shit, that is so high. It's really booky. It's really high. Oh, okay, be very careful. Okay, let me go on top of here as well for a better angle. Because the higher I go, the more background I can get. Look, if you look how tall this is. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I fell back, it is. Let me show the viewers. Jesus. That's really high, I know. So I'm just going to cling on to this. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, you can just lean and kind of, you know, Look at the view again. I just wanted to get the ponytail silhouette. Oh yeah, I think it worked. That's really scary. Fucking <laughs> Okay, we're gonna try and make it look like just his head. <laughs> it's coming out of the cannon. Okay, yeah, make sure you're like parallel. This is so wrong. Okay, hold on. You need to go lower than that and straighter than that. It's like a plank, isn't it? Okay, let me make sure. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, bum down a bit more. Shoulders. Okay, stay like that, stay like that. Now look at me. Okay, look forward. Let me show. Hey man, that looked really cool. Can you do that again? Can you do that again for a picture? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've seen quite a few. Sorry, Kitty. I think that's cool on the motorbike. Mm. I love the like shadows on the floor. Because the sun's so low now, the shadows are stretching a lot. And the colour is very orange, which looks cool. Can you sit like this? This right leg over and then looking that way. Yeah, I can. Thank you. Uh, back a bit, forwards a bit, okay, forwards a bit more, that's perfect. Oh, I love the colour scheme here. Okay, just finished dinner here in Valletta, Valletta. Yeah. and now we're just going for an evening short and found this amazing little scene. I'm going to place Georgia just over there, go a bit further. We're going to make use of this fan for some dramatic hair flick effects. It's like a hair wrapper, like L'Oreal, you're worth it. We take the lens cap off. The cutoff will be just above the knees. You, when taking portraits, you never want to cut people off um, at the joints. It looks a bit weird. So either just above or just below is good. Yep, that's perfect. Keep looking like that. Oh, this fan is doing this. Look at this. These are actually even better than ones before. Ooh, that's really cute. Yeah. Your posture. No drive-by shots here. Still got my 30 millimeters on. Uh, so the boat is going to be quite small but actually kind of works. Because safety is first, we had to wear these life jackets on a boat ride around Blue Grotto in Malta, which unfortunately covered up the GoPro. So here's some phone clips with the accompanying photos. 
This was quite a hectic boat ride, being only about 25 minutes long and I wasn't able to move around at all. So I definitely missed the flexibility of being able to zoom in and out with the Tamron lens. Where the 30mm did really well however, was in the sharpness of the pictures I did take as you can see on screen. The f1.4 aperture would have been useful in low light situations, such as inside the caves, but because I was still taking landscape shots, I didn't use very low apertures because I wanted everything to be in focus. <coughs> All right, time for some beach shots. We'll just do one more where come one step higher and put the leg that's closest to me on the top step and then look over your right shoulder again. Perfect. Ooh, yes. Amazing. Um, move your right arm down. Yep, that's good. Let me find a, a cool angle of this. Maybe I can climb out by using this wheel. Ooh. <laughs> can you hold yourself like that for a sec? Like a more, like a Ooh! Oh, I like these a lot. Look at that. That's so Ooh, cool. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Just like climb out while looking at me. Okay. And we'll see how that looks. And do it really slowly, one step at a time. Okay. And then each step, pause for two seconds. Okay, stop. The sunlight's really harsh, which is not great for pictures, however. I feel like that might be part of the beach kind of vibe. Ooh, yeah. Okay, face me. Cross your legs like that. Um, yeah, but your body is facing me. Yeah, like that. That's a really good pose. Fix your, uh, do this thing again, where you put both arms up. Yes. Amazing. Ooh, let me use this for foreground. Hold on. Ooh, this is going to be tricky. Going to try and incorporate some rocks into the frame. Just like this. I wish I had a flippy screen. This is really hard. Okay, my shoulders are <coughs> already a bit burned. So I'm going to cover myself with a towel and hopefully it won't block the GoPro. We are just outside the gate of the old town of Medina. And I'm going to take one picture with Georgia in and I'm trying to use this rail wall as a leading line. So if you just come a little bit closer maybe, um, try and lean a little bit against the wall, possibly. Cool. I like that, that's kind of cool. I like this little gate. I'm gonna read that. And I'm going to use the tree to frame it. Shooting at a four for now, I feel like that's where the lens is quite sharp. I don't really need like super blurry bokeh right now because I'm not taking any nighttime portraits. Cool. Pretty good conditions right now. There's a harsh sunlight, the sun's just going down. Uh, so you got these cool, interesting shadows. And I think whenever you pair that with old architecture, you get some really cool travel, street photography. Take a picture of that bell over there between these two walls. Place in the middle. Nice, again, natural framing. Awesome. Ooh, love this alleyway. It's just, I don't know what it is about harsh shadows and like European architecture, but I just quite like it. I think it's a good mix. Just needed one person to like walk down the center of the street. I really like that beam of light just in front of this door. Yeah. Very simple stuff. Do you want to just walk across the frame? Try walking in the sunlight first and then let me see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that works out pretty well. Look. Yeah, I love what we're looking at right now. Let me, um, maybe a horizontal shot. You got these nice like red um, window thingies. You got a church in the distance and then just clean aesthetic architecture all around. Boom. Do you want me to take a picture for you? <laughs> cool, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs> St. Paul's method. Oh, this is also St. Paul's Cathedral. That's such a cool church to just have like regular service. Like that's just the stuff. Let's take a quick wide angle shot here while we're at it. Couldn't be bothered to change over earlier, but once I was inside, it was so stunning, I had to. There we go. You all know I love a good diagonal shadow, so I can't help myself but take a quick photo here. 
We also have an interesting little wall coming in on, from the side here, which I kind of like. Boom. And whoa, this is really cool. Very high contrast, but I think I can make it work. Okay, nothing is clipping or crushing, so I think I can edit this. Oh no, actually it worked pretty Ooh, well. Ooh, yeah, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, got it. It's moving mad. Yeah, it's so fast. This is like a really difficult video game. Oh, now they're all coming. It's because they're... Oh. oh, I love this. It's like a lovely little lantern surrounded by these pink flowers. Traffic sign is slightly jarring. So maybe I'll go down and take a picture from below and upwards. For these kind of shots, I always make sure in post that I try to straighten things out. So I pick a reference point. So for example, it would be this building and just make sure that it's perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal, depending on the building. Okay, we found this amazing little tunnel with a great pocket of light. So Georgia is going to walk straight across, stand in the middle and just like, yeah, walk that way. I'll take another one without a person. So that looks like. Yeah, check it out. All right, love this alleyway, love the sunlight. We're just going to, again, use my personal model right here to stage a scene. We're gonna have Georgia walk down the street, facing away from us once, and then coming back towards us, and we'll see which kind of silhouette looks better. Realistically, it's going to be a more of a silhouette shot just yeah. because of how harsh and backlit you're going to be. Let's see. Keep walking into the sunlight. Cool, awesome. At the beginning of the trip, I definitely missed being able to zoom in and out that I'm used to from using the Tamron, especially during moments like the boat ride, where obviously wasn't able to get closer or further away from the subject. Where the 30mm did really well, on the other hand, is its f1.4 aperture especially in low light situations or when you're taking portraits and you want that creamy background blur. The Sigma 30mm is definitely much better than the Tamron because it goes all the way down to f1.4, whereas zoom lenses like the Tamron are limited to f2.8, resulting in worse low light performance and not as blurry bokeh. I think the 30mm focal length, which is a 45 on the full frame, is a really good focal length. It's a good perspective for kind of street photography, it's very close to what the human eye naturally sees, so it's not too wide, it's not too zoomed in, resulting in quite like realistic shots. The photos from both prime lenses were extremely sharp, which is kind of expected because if you're a manufacturer and you're making a lens that only shoots pictures at one focal length, it better be sharp. Whereas it's much more difficult to make sure that a zoom lens remains sharp throughout all focal lengths. So usually when you zoom all the way in with a Tamron, you can definitely notice a drop in picture quality. But then again, I would probably rather have a slightly not so sharp image at 70 mil than not being able to take a picture that's that zoomed in at all. I really like the combination of the 30 mil and the 12 mil. Whenever the 30 mil wasn't wide enough, I would simply swap over to the 12 mil. Um, for example, whenever I wanted to take a picture of impressive architectural features where both the stuff that's directly in front of me as well as the roof is interesting. This is usually the case in like churches or other tall buildings. As an added benefit, the 12mm is also wide enough for me to be able to hold the camera myself and film myself vlogging style, which I've used in previous videos, which isn't quite possible with the Tamron 17. It's just slightly too zoomed into my face and my, yeah, it's too much. In an ideal world, obviously, I wouldn't have to change lenses ever and I would just have a 10 to 200 millimeters f1.4 crazy zoom lens but unfortunately for you and me that lens doesn't exist going forward i will probably continue using my tamron zoom lens when traveling during the day but whenever i'm taking night shots and i want that f1.4 just for the extra added low light performance i would probably switch over to my 30 mil prime hope this was helpful and i hope you enjoyed watching as always and i'll see you next week